Alright lads and ladies, a brand new PlayStation is just about to be announced here in the official PlayStation Technical Showcase. It's only about 9 minutes long, we're gonna live react to it. Leave a like if you like PlayStation, and let me know in the comments section if you're hyped for the new PlayStation 5 Pro, which essentially, this is it. Here we go. Alright, here we go. Hi. I'm Mark Cerny. I'm excited to be here to talk about the newest addition to our console lineup, PlayStation 5 Pro, and how it advances gaming technology. But first, I want to take just a minute to look at what we put in the original PlayStation 5 and how it delivers an exceptional gaming experience. All right, here we go. We're going to talk about the original PlayStation when 5. When PS5 debuted in 2020, it brought a lot to the table. 8 Zen 2 CPU cores form the brains of PlayStation 5 and enable high-speed complex gameplay with character counts reaching into the hundreds and frame rates that can be as high as 120 frames a second. PS5 has a powerful RDNA 2 GPU which can render anything from intricate details We never seen to anything of that game worlds with vast panoramas to explore. Ray tracing allows for dramatic visual improvements, including reflections off of water or glass, and the realism that comes from real-time global illumination. A custom SSD can load data at breathtaking speed, resulting in ultra-fast transitions between game worlds, and data streaming rates so high that traversal speeds are essentially unlimited. You okay? I'm working on it! Tempest 3D Audio Tech brings an unparalleled sense of immersion to the sound. Demon games. Souls is still the best looking game on PS5 right With now. Audio so and that was a launch title. You don't even need to see the enemies to know exactly where they are. Finally, the DualSense controller has haptics that let you feel through your hands what your character is experiencing inside of the game. Well, somewhat we want. It's wonderful to see such variety and richness of game experiences. Creators have made amazing use of the hardware capabilities, but when I talk to them, I do hear about their desire for more graphics performance. The dreams of the developers are bigger than can be supported at 60 frames per second, and that leads to an aspect of modern gaming that we're all familiar with, graphics modes. Oh it yeah. Be a difficult choice for players. Always go with performance though. Fidelity modes emphasize the visuals, typically through higher resolution rendering. These modes might also have enhanced detail or use more ray tracing. But the games only run at 30 frames per second. The visuals can be choppier and the controls less responsive. Performance modes emphasize frame rate and interactivity, typically choosing to run at 60 frames per second. Ghost of Tsushima, what a game. Mainly by reducing the graphical detail until those frame rates can be achieved. When asked to decide on the mode, players are choosing performance about three quarters of the time. Removing that decision, or at least narrowing that divide, is one of the key targets for PlayStation 5 Pro. We want to give players the graphics that the game creators aspire to, at the high frame rates that players typically prefer. To do that, PS5 Pro substantially improves over PlayStation 5 in three ways. Here's what we call the big three. The big three. First, we made the GPU much larger and increased the speed of the memory it uses. The result is rendering that's up to 45% faster. Second, we made major upgrades to the ray tracing. Advanced. Taking a streamlined and accelerated approach that allows calculation of the rays at double or even triple the speeds of PlayStation 5. And triple. finally, we added custom hardware for machine learning and an AI library called PlayStation Spectral Super Resolution or PSSR for short. PSSR analyzes the game images pixel by pixel and can add an extraordinary amount of detail, which boosts the effective resolution of the games. Game creators are adding PS5 Pro support to new and existing titles. And with the big three involved, the results can be pretty amazing, with graphics showing something like fidelity levels of detail, but it doubled the frame rate. Here's The Last of Us Part Two running on PS5 Pro. It has huge amounts of detail and targets a super smooth 60 frames per second. All right. Looks good, actually. Let's compare this to the fidelity mode on PS5, which is only running at 30 frames per second and is therefore much choppier. Yeah, way choppier. 
That's why I don't understand. Why would you play on Fidelity? It's just too choppy. Fidelity like graphics at performance frame rate has been achieved for a broad set of titles, including Marvel's Spider Man 2 and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. We can see that PS5 Pro is close to doubling the power of PlayStation 5. Another way to compare the two consoles is to look at PS5 Pro versus performance mode on PS5, both of which target 60 frames per second. What we see here is a difference in detail. PS5 Pro is much sharper and crisper than PS5. Mm -hmm. For this, my favorite is the parade scene from Ratchet and Clank. Distant details are much clearer. And here we can see Marvel's Spider-Man 2 is noticeably higher resolution throughout the scene including the trees and procedural cars. I mean, it's not like so overall, some huge differences. On PS5 Pro, we can see increased sharpness to the graphics or smoother and more responsive gameplay. This is the big three showing their value. As you've been seeing, machine learning via the PSSR library is being used quite broadly to add pixel detail and boost frame rate. But there are as many approaches as there are game engines. The increase in raw GPU power is being especially effective for Horizon Forbidden West. Apart from the detail boost, that extra graphics power is allowing Whoa, for that game looks to beautiful. visual effects. As well as to the hair and the skin in cinematics. Open up, guys. Jorah's orders. Damn, that looks good. I still need to play that. Ray tracing is finding broad usage as well. Particularly when the games are focused on higher frame rates, the faster hardware in PS5 Pro can make a real difference. Allowing Gran Turismo 7 to add ray traced reflections between the cars in gameplay, while continuing to support the Whoa. targeted 60 frames per second. That boost in ray tracing is also delivering big wins for Hogwarts Legacy. Allowing floor. not only for better reflections and a greater variety of reflective surfaces, but also for further realism in the casting of shadows. I hope you've enjoyed this run through of the technology behind PlayStation 5 Pro. Simply put, it's the most powerful console we've ever built and a worthy addition to the PS5 family. Let me wrap this up by giving you a quick look at a number of games running on the new console. Oh, any new ones? Any new ones? Is this it? Okay, how big is that thing? Oh shit, Final Fantasy. Demon Souls. Okay, they're just showing titles that have been out. I don't think we're gonna get any new title announcements here. Imagine if they ended it with Bloodborne. Oh my god, that would be insane. Ghost of Tsushima. Okay. It's 700 it's 800 quid for me 800 700 pounds is 700 dollars holy shit all because they added gills to it and it doesn't have a disk drive either what the hell dude there's no disk drive vertical stand also sold separately 
What? <laughs> I have to buy this stand separately now? I'm already paying extortion prices for the damn thing. Holy crap. November 7th. I had a feeling it would be a November release date. But $700. For me, in Ireland, in Europe, $799.99. That's ridiculous. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to tell you. I think it's exciting for new hardware to be coming out. But these prices, man. I don't know. And I'm looking at this image. And I'm looking at the console compared to the controller. That looks like a really tall console, dude. They made it taller. Where the hell are you going to put that thing? It's huge. It's it's huge. And it doesn't even have a disk drive. God. I, I don't know, man. I mean, it's got some notable upgrades, but I don't know if those notable upgrades are worth that amount of money, in my opinion. Like, there is going to be the hardcore Sony fanboys that will get this day one. I will probably get it just to make a video on it. But, I don't know, dude. I, that's really, really expensive. Like, really, really expensive. Like, consumer-wise, it's not for your average consumer. This is for the hardcore PlayStation lovers and enthusiasts out there that are willing to pay that, but... We also have to remember that the PS3 when it launched was like 600 euro. I remember because I was really young at the time and I saved up all my money to get one and I spent that much on it like a like a freaking moron that I was. But still it's a different economy now, you know? That's that's ridiculous. Oh my god. <laughs>